Hi all, Carl here. Uh, today I'm going to actually fire up the turbo jet engine. Yesterday I gave you kind of a walkthrough through the general components and parts of the turbo jet engine. But now today I will fire this up and I'll give you kind of a walkthrough of what's going to happen as far as the stages of events. So first I will turn on the master power box that controls all of the component, electronic components of the jet engine as I explained yesterday. And then I will turn on the APU, which you know is very loud, uh, is my little uh, Electrolux vacuum cleaner APU motor. And this will be pushing uh, air into the intake of the turbo with the turbine wheel. That will be compressing air, sending it into the combustion chamber. Once that gets up to the, on the tachometer, once it gets up to 3000 RPM, then I will turn on the ignition, which you know sends a current to the Mallory ignition. That sends a current into the spark plug that is inserted into the bottom base of the combustion chamber. Once I do that, and I have 3000 RPM registered on the tachometer, I will turn on the hydrogen feed through the ball valve. It comes down through the flashback arrestor, down the fuel line, into the bottom of the combustion chamber, as I explained yesterday, and you will hear a boof. And what that is, is the hydrogen coming in contact with the spark from the spark plug that creates a shock wave inside of the combustion chamber. Now, what is important that the turbine is running is because it's pulling those burning gases, that happens very quickly, pulls those burning gases out of the combustion chamber and exits the exhaust. That creates the thrust of a jet. What I'm going to do is turn on the first oil pump, which is absolutely critical in a checklist of hierarchy of things to do, is first turn on that oil pump to lubricate the spinning turbine that allows it to get up to 3000 RPM minimum. Then I will turn on the APU that will force the air in. I'm watching the TAC RPMs at 3000. Then I will hit this last switch that is the ignition and you'll hear that boof light up. Now once that happens and I get it up to about 12,000 RPM, then I will disconnect the APU because the turbine is now self-lighting, meaning that the gas is going into the combustion chamber, combusting and exhausting out through the exhaust through the turbine compressor. That will allow a constant feed of fuel and you don't need the APU. It's literally like a jet engine. So uh, I'm all ready to go. I've got the master power on. So then let's get this baby fired up. Turn on the oil first, then the APU, and then finally the ignition switch, and you'll have light up. Now that the APU is running, it'll spin up the turbine, I'll go for an initial light up. One false light up, I'll readjust the incoming hydrogen fuel into the combustion, and go for another light up at 4,000 RPM. Now we have light up, 8,000 RPM, 9,000 RPM, I'll push it up to 20,000 RPM, and then disengage the APU. This will allow the jet engine and the turbine to be self-sustaining with the incoming air being more than the APU can push. We're at 20,000 RPM, I disengage the APU, readjust the incoming fuel, turn off the ignition, and I'll run it up to 40,000 RPM. We're at 1,800, 1,900 degrees at 22,000 RPM. This temperature will start to drop because of the air coming into the combustion. We're at 30,000 RPM. The temperature is dropping. We're at 1,000 degrees. Now we're at 40,000 RPM at 960, 980 degrees and I'll hold it there. We're below the 2,000 degree mark so I can self-sustain and run it for quite a long time. I'll initiate a shutdown, turn off the hydrogen, 
turn off the fuel pump and the oil pump, and we have shutdown. I'll turn on the APU to keep the cool air running into the turbine to cool the turbine shaft down. It's been a great run.